evening and welcome to the Anger Cast. This is a rant. And here we are back in GTA Online doing the Transform races for content as a vlog or a rant. Not to show how good of a racer I am, because I'm not. Also, I'm playing by myself against no one because I'm also <laughs> taking the time to take eight minutes to complete each race because at the time the Transform races came out, you could get twice the RP and twice the money, so why not make the most of a good thing, right? In fact, I was actually setting these videos up as a, a run to show how to do a solo run for the gun running DLC, which came out months ago, but I haven't really completed all of it because it's damn near impossible to complete for the highest amount of money while playing solo. I have a full warehouse, a uh, full bunker, but I can't sell anything because there are only one or two cell missions that you can get that, that you can do by yourself on an open server with nobody else in there, but I never get those particular ones. It's always ones that require multiple people. So it's not worth my time or effort for a video that won't generate any revenue, because then again, uh, then again, neither will these videos, <laughs> quite honestly, because the adpocalypse at YouTube is still doing its thing, and actually the two existing videos in these vlog series, uh, which haven't become public yet at the time of the recording this one, uh, are still set to limited or no ads, despite having no real objectionable content in it. I'm just racing. I'm not racing against anybody else. There's no violence. There's no objectionable content. Uh, you know, content in them, but because it's a GT online, or just because YouTube is just a bitch, which probably will get this one ding just for saying that, but hey, who cares? Uh, you know, I'm not going to get any revenue off these videos. This is just for me to talk to you and me hope that you understand where I'm coming from with this stuff. And it's a chance for us to engage. I like to engage the audience. But, you know, like I said, who cares? It's almost Christmas time. It's almost that time where you can buy all the games, the new games that are coming out. Well, Except, you may not want to buy the games that require you to uh, pay to advance. You know which ones I'm talking about. <coughs> EA. <coughs> and to really blow your mind with something you may not even know what I'm talking about, you have to understand something. As I've said before, I'm an old head. When I was a little boy, we had no internet. We didn't even have Amazon to go or GameStop to go buy those games. There was We didn't have a, a local Walmart anywhere. We had nothing. No PS4, no PS3, no PS2, no PS1, no Xbox, anything. We had an Atari. G.I. Joe's, Transformers, and a very special book that gave us all the hope we ever wanted on getting those things that we asked for for Christmas. That was called The Wish Book by Sears. It's kind of odd because I, I chose this topic specifically because Sears is pretty much gone. I mean, this is an institution in this world that has been around for, uh, you know, a century, over a century. It's Sears and Roebuck it was, you know, the progenitor of like catalog sales and stuff. And you don't know what catalog sales are. It's kind of like pre-Amazon. It's what we had with Amazon when we didn't have internet. Same idea. Now this year actually remarks the return of the Wish Book, but still the majority of you won't know what that was. Basically the Wish Book was uh, our Christmas catalog, all the toys that we wanted. And of course, you know, parents got to look through all the tools for dad and all the clothes for us to wear and you know all the things for mom in the kitchen or wherever else because you know we grew up in that time where the men did all the work and the women did all the housework you know that that the dark ages as i call them <laughs> really but you know but the idea was that shopping from home wasn't just for the antisocial like it kind of is now you don't want to go out and deal with the malls you don't want to go out and deal with people that's why you have cyber monday so you don't have to go get stomped over uh, a stupid uh you know cut rate korean uh lcd tv that really doesn't do all that much when you can get for the same price now, if not cheaper now than on uh, Black Friday. Uh, we have Cyber Monday for that. Now we can do all that without having to go outside, you know, inter interact with the masses. But shopping from home wasn't just for antisocial back then. It was for basically for those, like the catalog sales were for those who didn't live in areas near malls or stores, like a, uh, you know, a Sears or a JCPenney or stuff like that. And in the last uh, real wish book that I remember growing up was 1993, and I was 18 at that time. so really didn't matter that much to me I wasn't getting a lot of toys but uh, you know and then actually uh, the the wish book returned in 2007 briefly it's very smaller not the same thing and then it kind of went mobile in 2010 but still wasn't the same as growing up in fact 2017 marks the return it's still kind of back like it was before not the same not the same as it was when I was growing up let me describe to you the situation we had when I was growing up I came from a single income family and I'm, you know, I'm never gonna to uh, never gonna talk badly about that because my father, he put all the bread on the table, he did everything. My mom was a homemaker, my dad was, uh, you know, insurance agent. He went to work every day, came home, ate dinner, and then he went off to do other stuff. He grew up a farmer. He 
was on the municipal authority growing up. He was in the Lions Club. He, he helped out. He put back into the community. A lot of that stuff. And he did that all by, you know, himself with one income while my mother raised the family, three of us kids. And there's nothing wrong with that way. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that setup. That's the way it was. Back then, you could afford to live on a single income, uh, you know, salary. Or a home, co you know, home could survive on a single income. We didn't have the crushing expenses that we have now and the debt that we have now, where you almost need to have more than one job between two uh, parents or two, you know, uh, homeowners in order to make ends meet. And the fact that we actually got to have something for Christmas, you know, that wasn't just a hand me down, excuse me, that wasn't just a hand me down, was uh, an added bonus because, you know, I wore a lot of clothes that my brother once wore. There's a seven year difference between me and him, so they had a plenty of good stockpile of, of clothes for me to wear uh, by the time he was done with them. Unfortunately, though, the fashion between the seven years where he wore them and this, you know, later on when I wore them was much different, but eh didn't really care. I mean, my shoes were not Nikes until I was 12. I didn't start wearing Nike, you know, Nike shoes or, or you know, those types of brand shoes until I was in sixth grade. Uh, Instead, so we wore the, you know, the, the Sears catalog, the Keds, the, the, the Velcro ones, the blue, you know, almost vinyl looking ones with the white stripes down the side. The, the things that would have got you picked on in the lunchroom more than anything else. But that was life growing up back then. And those shoes and those clothes were bought out of, uh, you know, a catalog, maybe from JCPenney or Sears. But man, and <laughs> uh, there was other things you could find in the Sears catalog growing up as a young boy that uh, <laughs> were co quite eye-opening. <laughs> you and your friends were like, hey, look at that page. Wow, look at this. You know, because the uh, fashion back then was a little bit different. Things were kind of pushed up and out really big. <laughs> but that, you know, it's beside the point. Puberty beside the point. Um, at about Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving time, that era, the wish book would come out and we would grab that thing. It was like a phone book, man. This thing was huge, like 300 some pages. Huge book. And you just go, eh, tools, eh, clothes, ooh, hello. Hey, they're the toys. And it was just these big displays on the toy. And it had all the numbers and all the prices and everything else. And we went through with a, a marker and we would circle the things we wanted. Like, ooh, I want that uh, game. I want, ooh, I want that uh, sporting equipment. Ooh, I want that video game. I want that action figure. Ooh, I want this. And there was always one thing in the in, in the wish book, and I've talked about this before in other series. There's always one thing in the wish book that I wanted that I never got. Back then, about 1980, 81, 82, that time frame, there was in the Sears catalog, the wish book, there was this toy that was like the you know the ultimate thing for me to want to have. I remember watching a series called Silver Spoons growing up with uh, Ricky Schroeder and Alfonso Ribeiro, you know, Carlton from Fresh Prince Bel Air, and Ricky Schroeder played the son of a millionaire, like a, a toy. It was like the uh, he, he was a, some kind of megalo millionaire or whatever. And he lived in this big, huge house somewhere. And inside the house, there was a train, a train that a human could ride on. It wasn't big enough for like, you know, it wasn't like a, a life-size train. It was basically a, a rideable train that went through the house around the grounds. And it was like really cool. And I'm like, I always wondered what was going on behind, you know, when it went out of frame, where did it go? Did it go out through the yard? It was up through the estate. Did it just kind of go on the wall, kind of go around? Where did that train go? Because it kind of like went in a circle. And in that wish book at that time, there was on a, like a two fold out page spread, this train and tracks that you could put down in your house and ride around if you had a room big enough or a couple of rooms that you know connected that were big enough you could lay out track throughout them and ride this train around your house granted it was a pedal train it was plastic i mean it was nothing spectacular it didn't like run on its own and i probably would have been like eh i don't want to do any more boom and fall over but i always wanted it and i never got it because we didn't really have the room for it and it was kind of expensive um, you know, you bought the train, you bought track, and you need to buy more track, and then, you know, that just spawned an entire, you know, can of worms that my parents really didn't want to deal with. And they would, you know, to have to take it down and put it back up every so often, and then to store it somewhere would have been uh, insane. So, I mean, kid logic back then, you don't understand why you don't get those types of toys. And as an adult, you understand why you don't give those types of toys. But, you know, and, and the thing is, is that back then you had to kind of figure that, gonna get this kid a toy that he's gonna play with for about a year and then he'll be too big for it and it's gonna be useless I, I've learned that as a parent all the, I mean we've we've had toys and stuff from Christmases that ran three years that were never open and then by the time Bailey got around to you know me finding them in a room she was out had outgrown them it was either the clothes were too small or she was too uh, mature for the you know the, the toy so I ended up giving him to somebody else whose, whose kid was just coming up 
uh, you know, on the same age that she would have gotten it. And, you know, I, I, thankfully I was able to, to repurpose it to somebody instead of just throwing it away. I hate to, you know, waste something like that. It was a gift and we just got too much stuff. When you have children, you get stuff from so many people that you don't know what to do with it. So, you know, me asking for this train was probably the never going to happen, but it was a pipe dream for me. But it was the wish book. You wished for it, you know? And when the Atari came out, there was a page that had all the screens of all the games, and you're, like, drooling over the fact that there's all these Atari games that you wanted. Or the Star Wars uh, figures, action figures from the movies. <gasps> all those. I want to have all those. You know, when you get the one in the, in, in, when you got that one at the, uh, at the store and you opened it up, and well, I wish I would have known, I would have gotten two and not opened one of them because I've lost all the guns and stuff. And they're, you know, they, we, we played with them. We played with toys back then. We didn't just collect them and put them in a box somewhere. We played with stuff back then. We didn't know the inherent value of these things. But when you got the action figure on the back, it had all the one, it had like a, a placard on the back of the, uh, the, the, the packaging that had all of the, uh, <laughs> all of the action figures. You only wanted those. And it was just like seeing like three times that on a page in a catalog. You're like, yes, give me them all. I want to, you know, the biggest thing I got was uh, the, the Millennium Falcon, which was the coolest thing. I didn't put half the stickers on it. And the first thing that broke on it was the radar dish. But I still loved that thing and play with it all the time. I still have it. It's in my parents' house in, the, in, in my old room. So these are the things that, you know, we saw in this wish book that we really loved. Now, I don't know what kids do today when they like they see commercials for things or if they go on online and they see things but where you know where the kids get the ideas for what they want other than from their friends and see what they have we had an outlet for that we had this wish book we would open up and each year it was like we waited for that thing to come out and there was multiple ones one like jc penny had a christmas catalog they were the huge big honking things i mean the mailmen back then or male persons male ladies whatever must have had like arms of steel from carrying around all these the thing about having to deliver all of those catalogs every year that's like national hernia day for them to have to have done all that. But we got that wish book and we looked through it and we saw those things. And then, here's the other thing, beyond the wish book, if we actually did go to a store, now when I grew up, the place to go in southwestern Pennsylvania to get the toys was a store called Hills. Doesn't exist anymore. Hasn't existed for years. But <laughs> Hills is where the toys are. There was a commercial with a little gnome or an elf at, you know, Santa's workshop. Because Hills had a great little thing called layaway. Layaway is sort of the opposite of paying with a credit card. With layaway, you put money down against the price of the item, but you don't pick it up from the store until you've fully paid for it. I've done layaway one time. I'm staring at the curio cabinet in my dining room right now where the layaway item it, you know, sits, this curio that I bought from an Ames store 17 years ago that I put on layaway because I wanted, the, the odd thing about it was I didn't I was going to be moving from one place to the next and I figured well there's no sense in me buying it now and paying for it now and putting it in my place when I'm going to have to move it and it probably will get destroyed so I put it on layaway so that I would have to pay it off over the, over the time that it took me to move from one location to the next and then by the time I was done unpacking and everything I went and said here's the final amount let me take my curio so <laughs> that was the, the you know the idea behind that but layaway was mainly for people who started shopping early for Christmas or for anything where they said, okay, you know what? I know I'm not going to get this till Christmas. So like the week before Christmas, that's when all the parents went to finally make their down payment. All, you know, the, the back, back, uh, back rooms of the stores were full of layaway stuff at like the hills where everybody was like coming to get all of their items. That they, and it was the easiest way because it was the easiest way for, for parents to not show what they were getting for their child for Christmas, the things that came from, you know, mom and dad. I mean, Santa Claus, he delivers everything that night. He didn't have to worry about where to put it. Mom and dad, the things that they buy for their kids and put under the tree, you know, after Santa Claus goes through, they're not like, oh my gosh, Santa Claus put all the stuff out and then we have to put the other things out, you know, that we got. But they don't have a place to hide them sometimes in the house because kids are inquisitive. They'll go looking around and see all the things that mom and dad bought them for Christmas. So Hills and other stores that offered layaway you could go and say, hey, you hold on to it. I'll just keep paying it off, and then I'll pick it up. And it didn't cost you anything in, in an interest. That was the great thing about it. You paid for it as cash, not plus 20% like you would if you put it on a credit card. And if you put it on a credit card, you'd have to take it then. So layaway was a great thing uh, in the times of Hills. Now, we loved going to Hills because Hills, when you walked in, it's like immediately to the right of the, the entrance was all the electronics, and there was the Nintendo. 
Oh my goodness. As a little kid, seeing that Nintendo and all the games sitting there was just fabulous. It was just like, yeah, you go ahead and look for other things. I'm going to be here just playing. And we didn't have a lot of places to go back then. The mall was probably the biggest thing, and the malls are pretty much of a dead space now. There's nothing... Really... In fact, the Sears at the mall near my hometown is no longer a Sears. It was a <laughs> it was a spirit Halloween store uh, this past October. That you know They don't exist anymore. Sears is going... The, 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 the brick-and-mortar stores are dying out in this world, except for ones like Walmarts or Home Depot or... Lowe's. The specialty specialty stores are going to be there, and the cheapy, you know, Walmart ones are going to be there. But the old school, the ones that didn't sort of evolve with everything else, the Kmart's, they're gone. The Sears are gone. J.C. Penney's are falling apart. Kaufman's, which is now Macy's, sorry, Kaufman's when I grew up was Kaufman's. There's a clock downtown in Pittsburgh where everybody would meet. It was called the, you know, the Kaufman's clock. It now then became the Macy's clock. Well, that is no longer there anymore, and I don't know who owns the clock now, if it's still there. I hope it's still there, because it was a meeting place for people when they were shopping downtown. But those department stores that were out there in full force when we were growing up, those anchor stores and malls are just falling away. And we don't have those types of things. And so, that, you know, and that was the kind of the thing with, before we had the Amazons and, you know, um, what, New Eggs and Best Buys and Targets and all that stuff, we had catalog shopping because you know when you had three kids and one car or two cars and you just could take them and go you know buy stuff for them without them knowing what it is it was easy to just say I'm going to put everything write everything down write all these numbers and it was very it was a very extensive thing to have to do all that for a parent to take all the items write down like the little order form write down all the numbers by hand imagine having to order everything by writing down like a six or seven digit number on each line and then figuring out the cost of that on the other box like filling out an application you put all the numbers on the left you put the how much it costs on the right and then at the bottom you have to add up everything so you have to do all the math and all that and then you have to write out the money you have to pay for it right then and there or give a credit card or whatever it wasn't just like going online at like amazon.com saying add things to your cart whoop, pay for it and then it'll just ship there was a lot more you know work involved doing it by hand we have become a society that no longer does manual things that we should do because it'll keep us able to do those things. We're, we're becoming to the point where we don't need handwriting skills anymore, which sucks. We need to have those types of things. But that's another topic altogether. But, you know, then your mom or your dad would put that in, in the in envelope in the mail and send it off to the Sears cattle people, and then they had to wait for things to ship. And they had to pay for shipping, too. We didn't have, like, free shipping over $35 or over $50. We had to pay for shipping back then. So they would get all those boxes in while you were at school and then they have to go hide them somewhere and then you know you they, they'd wrap them up and put them next to the stuff that santa brought you or the layaway stuff they'd go and pick them up while you were at school bring them home put them you know wrap them up hide them somewhere and then put them out next to the stuff that santa brought you so that you know there was the shopping experience back then was different but then again not to sound like an old hermit it was more magical to have the old days of shopping through an online catalog or through a, just a store catalog and that kind of thing and not have to deal with the crowds. If you could buy everything through the Sears catalog, and that was one way to kept Sears relevant back then when malls started to pop up was the fact that they were offering the ability for you to get everything you wanted from one spot before the Walmarts were around and you had to go out and deal with all the people because you know, sometimes it was harder to deal with that when you had kids, like I said, you know, as an adult having to go out to the stores uh, during the rush and, you know, go Christmas shopping with all these kids. Now, as I got older and I got to be in my teens, my mom and I, and this was the fun thing. This was also the fun thing I miss about Christmas time. My father would, Monday nights, he was always at a Lions Club meeting. And that would mean that we really didn't cook dinner. My mom, you know, by the time that rolled around, I was basically the only child at the house. My brother was off at college. My sister was out on her own. It was just my mom, my dad, and myself. And Monday nights, he would go and do the Lions Club meeting. So we didn't cook. She didn't cook a meal on Monday for two people. And I was somewhat of a picky eater, so I didn't eat half the stuff that she would have made by her for herself. So what was the point? We would go to, like, you know, <laughs> the odd thing is I remember going to Racks, the Racks, you know, uh, restaurant the fast food place and we would eat there and then we would go shopping and as I got even older I said look I'll meet you back here at a certain time and I used to wear a watch we didn't have cell phones like that so we couldn't text you and say hey where the hell you at 
I'm at the food court, I'll be right there. We didn't have that. So you had to <laughs> say, all right, you know, synchronize your swatch, as we would say in the 80s and the 90s. Synchronize your swatch, uh, meet back here at 9 o'clock. Okay. So mom would go off and do her shopping and do all her stuff, and she'd probably make a couple trips back to the car so I couldn't see it. And then I would just go off, and I'd just wander around. I, normally I would, go, I would go to the arcade of all places, where the real pay to advance happened. <laughs> you would put a quarter in, back then a quarter pl- got you a game, and you would play so far, and then you'd have to either continue with another quarter or just, you know, stop. We didn't have save games back then. You know, you had to actually pay money to get further. But you didn't pay money. You paid money to play the actual game. You didn't pay money to get things to help you play the game. So that's the whole, you know, pay to play thing that bothers me. Is you, you, I, if that's like, like saying, all right, I put a quarter into the uh, double dragon machine, but in order for me to get enough strength to beat the guy on the next board, I had to put in two more quarters uh, in order to get a boost. And I was like, why would you do such a thing? Why would you pay for, for stuff that, you know, extra stuff to make you be able to play the game? Anyways, back to, you know, what we were saying. So we would get done shopping, and those were some pretty magical times growing up. I, I used to love those times. You go in the mall, and that was back before I got kind of, like, fed up with the mall. I was still young. When you're still young, you kind of like that. Now, the funny thing is, is my daughter, Bailey, she is so, she can't even stand going to the store with me to go sh- grocery shopping. She can't stand people. She's 10 years old, and she's, like, antisocial against adults. Like, she goes to school with other kids. She's fine. She's cool. She likes that. But she's, like, she doesn't... She feels like she doesn't trust people. And I don't I don't blame her because of the way the world's been lately for not wanting to trust other adults. We breed them to, you know, we breed them. We, we give them all the information to say, don't talk to strangers. Don't do this. Don't do that. Strangers is bad. They can, you know, do things... And then we send them out in the world and say, well, why would I go to the place where they're all strangers? Why would we even go there? Because there's just strangers there. I'm like, well, dude, I have to go get food. And even we're getting to the point now where you can just say, call up the, you know, your local store and say, hey, I want this, 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 and this. They'll put it in a bag. You come and pick it up, pay for it, and you don't even have to go in the store. We are basically taking social interaction out of our everyday lives because of the Internet, because of you know, the way we do digital uh, commerce, all that kind of stuff. It's just, it, we're ruining uh, our ability to interact with people, and it's becoming harder for us to even have social interaction to the point where we can't even formulate, you know, basic conversations without problems. And then you wonder why the comment sections of things are so horrible. It's because we don't know how to talk to people without feeling the need to be belligerent because we can, because there's no. Uh, you know, you're not looking them in the eye and, and there's no retribution for doing so. You know, maybe if we still had stuff like the old days, we'd be like, but then again, I, I'm, I'm contradicting myself with that statement because I'm talking about a, a catalog where you didn't have to do that. <laughs> but you were still forced to go out and do on a regular basis for everything else. This was just, I mean, the Sears catalog, like I said, was just a really was a way for people to order things that didn't live near commercial areas. You have to remember some Sears was like a... a feed and you know they were like they were more for the farmers than they were for anything else back then they were like a good store a feed store they weren't about you know shopping uh, for appliances and stuff like that they didn't come till later but you know early on when you had to get stuff to keep your homestead alive back in the you know the late 1800s early 1900s you needed some place to go that you could get to despite the bad weather and the you know the catalog companies were the way to do that that's something that we don't have anymore. We have, you know, we have Amazon now for that kind of thing. I guess I shouldn't say it's different in the sense that it's better or worse, but the idea being that we had it a lot better back then, I think, for other reasons. We've taken a lot of technology and a lot of good ideas and made them horrible. Same thing with, like, Atomic Fusion. Splitting the atom was probably a great idea for energy and for stuff like that, but, man, we could really kill a lot of people with this kind of technology. Yeah, that, that's basically it. That's, that's you know, that's Christmas at Ground Zero. How about that? I just wrapped it all up into there. So this vlog and rant is brought to you by the Atomic <laughs> the Atomic Energy Corporation. Now, I do have a lot of other things coming up. This is the last vlog uh, rant, I guess you'd say, for the Transform races. I don't know when the next one's going to be. Maybe probably not until after the beginning of the year. But <clears throat> there are a lot of things you can do out there to help me out. And, and if you like this type of content you want to see more of it, let me know in the description. Uh, or in the uh, comment section, do let me know. 
But the idea being that is I am I'm starting up a couple of new things. I have a couple of things in the hopper already and a couple more that are coming as soon as I can get them done. Um, so I would like to take a chance and use that time after the end of the year to sort of talk about those things with a vlog or a rant. Maybe we'll do something else. I don't know. Uh, you know, some type other video game because I'm not going to do a face cam. But if you like what you see, by all means, I'm still looking to get 200 or 500 subscribers by the end of the year, and I've got less than 20 to get as of right now. So please, if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, leave me a comment, and if you feel so inclined to do so, and you want to leave me a little tip for doing such a great job, or to suggest that I do something else, or some type of other video, or talk about anything else, you want to hear me just rant about anything, I will do so. But let me know because I have a Patreon page, and I've talked about it before, but we're going to talk about it again, because i got two more minutes to fill. <laughs> but there's a Patreon page with a link in the description that'll take you to it, and I'm offering rewards. I'll give you a shout-out in a video. I'll give you, I'll name a dweller after you in Fallout Shelter. I'll send you stickers. I'll send you a mug. I'll send you a shirt. There are so many things you can get for being a subscriber or being a patron and you don't have to be a recurring patron you don't have to pay money every single month there is a link on how to be a one-time subscriber that actually came from patreon not from me trying to buck the system that actually came from patreon to say here's how if you wanted to just be a subscriber one time so there you go that's it for the uh the the transform races thanks again for watching i really appreciate all that you guys have done i hope that you have are having a great um holiday season from you know Thanksgiving now to Christmas I hope you get what you want all that you want I hope you get everything that you've asked for good uh, good will towards men peace on earth all that thing you know I'm gonna enjoy watching uh, Charlie Brown again and again and again every year just because I love the message but uh, you know I hope you get what you need and what you want this year Thank you all for being a part of the, the Angry Cast in another year. Now the fourth year. We're finishing up the fourth year of the Angry Cast. Wow. I never thought I would be this far. <laughs> I thought I was going to end really quickly uh, right after I started. But, you know, we're still going. Even though I'm not making any money off of it, I'm still going because I love to do what I do. But uh, that's, uh, that's all I got for you. Thanks again, and you have a good night. Bye-bye.